All right. All right. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to Beastly Thoughts show episode number uh, 129. Hey, you got it. Nice. I did my research. (laughs) (laughs) I looked at last week's show number. (laughs) How are you guys doing? How are you guys all doing well? I'm glad to see you. Man, yeah. you guys look you guys look better and better every week. It's like you're getting Brian, you're getting younger, Robbie, you're getting older. This thing is just fucking amazing. I'm Benjamin it's fucking awesome. buttons over here. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I figured this shit out. <laughs> I knew you had an Avon membership. I mean, a lot of the young young viewers don't know about Avon. I'm sure that Brian, you know. Avon all calling. <laughs> Yo, I gotta tell you guys. We start the show every day, usually 20 to 15 minutes before the show actually begins. We all kind of, you know, we start the Skype call. I'm fucking with this. I'm fucking with that. And every week I'm like, why isn't this freaking thing working? And why isn't that thing working? (laughs) Like, what's up with OBS? And what's up with Skype? Skype's constantly messing with me. Man, when we finally start the show, it's like, (laughs) ah. It feels so good to just start. (laughs) A sigh of relief. Right. Okay. It's done. I don't have to mess with anything anymore. (sighs) (laughs) I can just enjoy your company now. (laughs) Uh, We're here for you, Briar. You know, I I, I see, I see the stress in your eyes during the pre-show. We're having Robbie and I will be going back and forth talking about stuff, and I'm looking at Briar, and he just. In a, a completely different place, <laughs> a completely different space. And so, exactly, man. Yeah. It always makes us feel good when you can join us, Briar. Yeah, Welcome man. To the it's Thoughts. the weirdest feeling, but as soon as we go live, it's like, oh, I can relax now. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to like, you'd think it'd be the opposite way. You know, you'd think yeah. that, you know, the stressful thing would be going live. It's mm-hmm. not like that no. at all. No, (laughs) you know, I I guess over time it becomes kind of the norm for me. It's as as simple as breathing. Now, I remember when we first started the show, Briar, uh, it was pretty stressful. And back then we had like three people watching us. Right. Right. (laughs) And two of them were us. You know, I remember three views. (laughs) Yeah. You, me and my mother. (laughs) (laughs) It took a while. Thanks, Ma. Uh, Thanks, Ma. You're the best. but after all this time doing this for so long, it's, it just feels like an extension of just being out in the real world. I love doing it. Super excited about this week. Some great questions that we got. I want to ask you a question, Briar, because I know that you were in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Of PlayStation VR. Yeah. Are you still Are you still in the honeymoon phase? Have you kind of Is it kind of phasing out? Are you kind of seeing PlayStation VR for what it's going to be in the long run yet, or are you still in love with it? Are you liking it less? Dude, it's the next thing. It's the next thing. Like yes. it really is it, to me. It's, it is. Yeah, it, it really is. It's going to take a while for the software to catch up. Like I, somebody's a little light on cash. They're wondering, ah, oh, should I buy, you know, like should I buy a few games or should I buy a PSVR headset or, you know, like pay your mortgage? I, you know, I would go with the mortgage right yeah, now. For sure. It's still in its infancy. This har- the hardware will get better and the software definitely will get better. And I think the software will get better quick. But from what I've played, some of the experiences I've had in VR, Gary Diaz is in chat right now. He got me to check out the uh, VR Playroom. Remember the Playroom that came with the PlayStation? Yeah. Those little robots? There's They made another version of that just for VR. And there is one portion of that that it's like it's a platform. It's a three-dimensional platformer. Imagine playing Mario, but you're in the world with Mario. Can you imagine that? Yeah, does it actually feel that way? It feels exactly that way. Like, the game is actually, it's got tight gameplay. You use your controller to interact with stuff, like the little touchpad to interact with stuff around you. Um, There's little puzzles you got to solve. Like, the goal is to rescue, you're like that little robot, you know, that little white robot that PlayStation uses as their mascot now. You're one of those guys, and you've got to kind of, you know, you got to navigate this three-dimensional world, Mario 3D style, and it's really fun. It's only one level. It's really short, but it shows the potential of it doesn't have to be this first person experience to be this really immersive experience, right? Oh. It even this even just being in this world is so good. You know, it really is a cool experience. Uh, I also today I was streaming a little uh of uh Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which yep. I've talked about before. This game scares me like pretty violently. All right, there's a couple of times, but so that's mostly pants. in the first hour or so, and then like the rest of it is basically just an action game, and it's fun. I gotta say, it's pretty fun. I like 
I like being in a world and just being able to look around and you got the and you got the move controllers and you're you know you're aiming down sight and you're shooting. It's just fun, man. Like it's just more fun to be in VR than it is to be looking at a TV. Yeah, or some of the ugly people in your fucking neighborhood or your house. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm going to get my full disclosure, everybody. I'm getting my PlayStation VR this Wednesday. I got it all figured out. I sold some kids off to slavery. You know, the money's coming in. It'll be here by Wednesday. Now, I have one original PlayStation Move controller. I still have it. Should I just go and buy another of the original Move controllers and get the $400 set? Or should I just wait and get the entire $500 set that comes with two new Move controllers, the camera, and PlayStation uh, VR Worlds? Do you have uh, Move controllers and a camera? Yeah. Yeah, I have one. Get... I, I have one move controller and I have a camera. Yeah, you have one move controller. You need two. Yeah, well, I can. That's what I'm saying. I can buy another one for twenty dollars on eBay. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would go with the cheaper one. You can get VR Worlds. You can buy that separately, or that's not it. But you can buy the VR Worlds separately. Um, the move controllers. It's nice to have brand new move controllers, so the the um, you know the batteries are going to work. Um, mm-hmm. And the PlayStation camera, if you already have that, you're good to go. Yeah. I would buy the $400 version if you could get away with it. Okay, well, we'll see. You know, we have two PS4s, three PS4s in the house, and my wife has one. So if I was to get the $500 kit, then she'd have a camera too. Can you imagine the kind of adult games you can play with two PlayStation cameras? <laughs> Exciting. So I guess we'll find out Wednesday. I'll be doing my unboxing. I'm super excited. Every time I hear you talk about this stuff, it really gets me amped. I had no clue that... They, is this uh, the playroom you talked about? Is it like a free download, or how did you how did you get this? Is it just added to the original playroom? The playroom room? is for free. Yeah, you just buy that. It, you don't even buy it. You just download it for free. Yeah. And, and so far, from what you from what you've seen on the original PlayStation, the the worlds are rendered pretty believably. It's like you, you're not really broken from the immersion because of the way the games look, right? It depends on the game. Uh, it depends <laughs> on the game, and it depends. It depends on a few factors. Like, I bought a game today that I kind of wanted to do, like, a fun horror thing theme today for my stream. Uh, And I bought a game. Where's my controller? I forgot what it's called, so I'm just looking it up. Um, It's called Here They Lie. Oh, I heard about this, yeah. And it's like, it's a first-person game, so you're in the world. And you walk around, but the controls are really fucked up. And I don't know, I didn't instantly get nauseous by it, which usually when I get into a game that has a nauseous side effect, it, it it's immediate. But this game, it's like, uh, it, it, it pulled me out because the movement felt weird. And like eventually I started getting nauseous because it didn't feel. So it really depends on the game, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll definitely be playing this week. Uh, I'm super excited about it. And now, since we talked about VR and I got my speculative question out of the way, let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Robbie, you want to get started? Because you've done so much talking already on this show. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, so this week, I have been playing a little bit of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the beta. I haven't been playing much of it because I feel like I don't want to get burnt out in that game. You know, it's a couple weeks away. And overall, I think my final impressions are that multiplayer is fun, but I'm not super impressed by it because it just feels like similar to Call of Duty Ghosts with Black Ops 3's movement system tacked on. And there's just, there's so little innovation in this game, and I'm really disappointed that Infinity War didn't get more creative with the multiplayer because the campaign looks ambitious. That looks amazing to me. And Zombies in Spaceland looks like fun. This just feels like the same old thing, man. So The I'm campaign very does look good, though. Like, the more I've yeah. seen of it, like the more I want to play it. That's what I'm holding out for Infinite Warfare, that that campaign is awesome, because that is what's really exciting to me right now. But uh, anyways, other than Infinite Warfare, I've also been playing Battlefield 1, and holy shit, I love this game. Because the campaign, probably one of the best Battlefield campaigns, maybe ever. It is awesome. The multiplayer is some of the best, too. Like, let's get into the campaign first. So basically, the campaign follows these five... Uh, different like short stories in different countries so you're following like different soldiers so the first one is like you're basically with your squadron in a tank called Big, Big Bess and you're basically escorting the tank which is super cool then there's a segment with where you're flying an airplane uh, in the Swiss Alps and stuff like that then you're in Italy then you're in the 
Middle East. Like, it's crazy. It jumps all these different timelines. And the campaign is emotionally investing. Like, I really cared about the characters. And there Did was you cry? A lot of- no, I didn't cry, but there were a lot Damn. of times where it's like, holy shit. Like, this Why is do you an want to make him campaign. cry, Beastly? I just think it'd be good. Why well, don't have to good, cry? It, it, it'd be good for the show. <laughs> no, but I was really shocked. Like, even in the opening to Battlefield 1 was this really, like, heavy message of this was 100 years ago. This is a war to end all wars. A lot of people died. And it was like, holy shit. Like, I got a lot of feels from playing this game. And I, I love the campaign. The campaign is fun. And it works well as a... Uh tutorial for the multiplayer as well doesn't it yeah and i just love the different stories of these different soldiers like you're playing completely different scenarios and it's always fresh and it's just got a wonderful story to it i always felt invested in it and it really is impactful like there it's really shocking what happens and yeah i really love it and then as far as the multiplayer goes too i mean this is basically battlefield but set in world war one you know you have your 64 players you have conquest you have rush all those modes and I think this is probably my favorite Battlefield multiplayer as well. Because of the mm. setting, because of the weaponry, because of things like the giant Zeppelin you can call in in a match, which is so cool, and the train and all that. Like, it's just awesome, man. I love this game. I absolutely do. Now, this is a game that hasn't honestly been on my radar. I've never seen any betas, never played any of it. Seen a few trailers, you know, when the game was revealed. Now, during the pre-show, or before the show actually began, you told me that this is a game I should maybe pick up. Uh, is, yes. in, in your opinion, it's the best the best of the Battlefield games is what you're basically saying. The best story and the best multiplayer. I came into yeah. Battlefield for the first time on Battlefield 4, the broken edition. <laughs> that was rough, <laughs> though. This is not broken. I can say playing day one, servers have been great. Really well done. Yeah. Well, I may, I may actually consider this. Uh, you know, if I, if I played Battlefield 4 and gave that the time of day and Briar and I actually went in with the Beastly Thoughts crew and played that game together and hated it together, maybe maybe something can change with this one. It does look beautiful. It looks like a, a very, very uh, graphically intense oh, game. It's gorgeous, man, too. It's, it is. Awesome. It's amazing looking. But, and this yeah. is like the first first-person shooter uh, this generation set back in those days, too, right? Oh, yeah. I Especially can't remember World another War game I. set in World War I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, World War Two obviously was done to death like yeah. ten plus years ago. But World War One honestly is mostly unknown, and that's the other thing too. The historical accuracy of this game is actually really on point. Like, there's a lot of things I've learned about World War One that I did not know, like certain events and things that happened, and even things like, especially like the planes in World War One were very experimental. A lot of pilots were young people that didn't have any experience flying, and it was just a lot of trial and error and there were things like that i was like wow like that's really cool to learn about and you learn about the different events that happened and things like that and they just i think they nailed it this is absolutely one of the best campaigns that battlefield's ever had and the multiplayer is definitely up there so i love the game i've talked to a couple of friends who have this game i haven't played it yet and i told them what my experience was with battlefield 4 i like battlefield 3 right i like battlefield 3 i like i came into battlefield 4 thinking (laughs) Okay, let's do it. You know, I had issues with Battlefield 3. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Went into Battlefield 4. First of all, I was broken for the first six months. Like, fucking <laughs> garbage. Six it was months. so hot, bad. Everyone hot trash broken, yeah. right? Like, the game uh-huh. would crash on you all the time. Shit would just not work. You know, all sorts of broken. So that had me worried about Battlefield 1. But there's also mm-hmm. this aspect of it being a hiking simulator where I was coming from the Call of Duty world, and, <laughs> you know, you, you don't go... 20 seconds without getting into a gunfight never mind a minute or two minutes where yeah. Yeah. you know you'll just be you'll just be hiking across the map from what i've played i've watched a couple of streams and i've talked to a couple of people about it and the way the spawn system works right now if you want to be in the action you're going to be in the action the game runs very well at 60 frames per second on console runs very well on pcs even if you don't have a 1080 yeah. you know a 1080 graphics card it runs great. But what I'm really hearing is that this game is fun. Like, the game is, it amps up the fun factor way past where Battlefield 4 was. It is. It absolutely um, is. You know, there's a lot of different stuff you could be doing. You could f- be flying in a plane. You could be manning mm-hmm. a turret. You could do a tank. You could be riding a goddamn horse with a with a sword lopping off people's heads. Like, there's all sorts oh, of man. stuff you could be doing in it. Uh, the, the guns are fun to use. You know, they're effective to use. Yeah, uh, it's just a, it's a more fun version of 
of Battlefield, and they kind of they took this World War One setting, but they kind of they modified it to fit their video game needs and just made a fun game out of it. Yeah, obviously it's not exact to World War One because you know World War One there was a lot of trench warfare, there was a lot of mustard gas and things like that. It's Obviously, it's a video game, so it's not going to be a perfect representation of that. But as far as the history goes, it's right on top. And yeah, as far as gameplay, like obviously they made it faster and they made it all that. But a little more perspective, too. Like as far as my history of Battlefield, I always liked Battlefield, but I never felt like I was super invested in it because Battlefield 3 was all right. I liked that. Battlefield 4, I never got into. But this game, there's something about the setting, the weaponry. And just the epic feeling, man, of when the music starts playing and you rush an objective, like you just get these this chilling feeling. It is like you're really on a battlefield, and it just is epic. Yeah, tell like something tell, about this game that stands out. Really tell does. Tell the truth, Robbie. You get a stiffy when you play Battlefield, don't you? Oh, I get so excited. That's yeah, why I, I, I get crying. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is, with all Battlefield games, it does share the fact that it is much more fun to play with people. Uh, yes. You know, as opposed to like Call of Duty, where I could just jump in there for 20, 30 minutes, play a few games, uh, and jump out. Battlefield's never been like that, and it's not like that now. You really want to get a few people in there, play for a couple hours at a stretch to feel some progression in its multiplayer leveling system, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. But man, it looks fantastic. It just is gorgeous to look at. It is. Even on the, even on the uh, current gen hardware, the PS4 and the Xbox One, it is. It's really good. I haven't played it yet. I am going to buy it. I haven't bought it yet. I'm planning on buying it this week, putting some time into it. Uh, hopefully I can, you know, hopefully hopefully my positivity is shared next week as well as it is this week. <laughs> yeah. If it's awesome. anything like PlayStation VR, I can't wait to hear about it, Briar, because, <laughs> oh man, I'm super pumped. Now, I don't know if I'll be getting uh, Battlefield 1. I, it's one of those games that's kind of, you know, I've never been a huge Battlefield fan. I've been kind of burnt by it <clears> before, but... After Briar, after you grab it and you you play it and you let me know your real thoughts on it, I'll, I'll definitely consider it. Now, as far as me, this week I've been over encumbered with work. Yes, I used uh, a Skyrim word. I have been overburdened and over encumbered with work. Yes, yeah. it's Love been that. very crazy. But I uh, I did play some games this weekend that just made me feel good. Games that are just fun, and I'm sure most of you guys have played it. This weekend, I've been playing Infinite Warfare, and I got to say, I was wrong last week. Uh, the game, it performs pretty damn well, Briar. Uh, the reason I didn't like it before, because I was, you know, I only played a few, a handful of games, is because I was getting my ass handed to me. And so when that yeah. happens to you, you feel like, hey, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I don't like this game. Yeah, it's just not as fun <laughs> when fun. you're not doing good. Yeah. It can't be that I'm just this bad bad this game is fucking broken but i was actually that bad and so now i've been kicking a little bit of ass and the game actually feels very very good i'm actually really really enjoying the way the game feels as i told you guys earlier i turned my sensitivity up i cranked that shit cranked it to number 11 or 12 and that just gives you so much more of an advantage playing the game especially when people play default settings because you can turn and blast someone in the ass face balls foot whatever you want and they have no clue where the bullet came from. So I've really been enjoying that. I've also been playing a little bit of uh, Uncharted 4's multiplayer. I told you guys before the show began, I've been playing some of that, and I've been wondering why the hell I stopped. They, there's so many new things that's been added to this game. It just feels so fresh and fun. So many things going on in, in the map, and it's really fucking awesome. And I implore you guys, whenever you get a chance and you're not playing the newest stuff, to go back and as try it. As soon as I meet the single player, I'll, I'll play some multiplayer. You haven't yeah. beat the single player? <laughs> what? Briar. Go back and finish it. What? How oh did you not do this? What? <laughs> this is a beastly thought state of emergency. This is we yeah, need code you red. To go to the comment section and talk to Briar and explain to him Tell what Tell Briar what he's, he's doing wrong oh, in the chat right now. <laughs> You'll hear about it. You guys let him know. Uh, now gonna I play. just want to. I'm going to wait. Actually, now I'm not going to play it until the PS Pro comes out because it's going to get enhanced for the PS Pro. I want to see what the oh, see what it looks man. like on that. It's so. for Pro in two weeks. Hey, it's hey Briar. Cool. The Last of Us is too exciting. Pitch but I, Ultra HD I wouldn't actually mind playing The Last of Us. That's a PS3 game that got a an upres to it's, PS4. Yeah. Enhanced, now it's and getting that, enhanced again. And now it's getting another enhancement. Shit. <laughs> Uh, but 
I've been having a little bit of fun with that, but the game that I probably had the most fun with is the one I expected the least out of, which actually had the most to offer. Stuff that I had no idea was actually added to the game, Rocket League. I've been playing Rocket League. <laughs> I went back to the very best PlayStation Plus game of all time, and I've been playing that game, and it by far is the best value I've ever received on PlayStation Plus or Xbox. For a free Live game, it's not bad. <laughs> My God, they've added the so many. Clean. They've added so many new modes to play the basketball, all this stuff, all the. It just feels so fresh and so fun. And of course, they keep in, in improving the soundtrack of this game. And so I've just been playing those like a kid in a candy store. It's been a tough adult week, doing a lot of work. Had to do that work. Sold Adulting some kids, sucks. did some overtime, PlayStation VR. Now I'm down to only three kids, and I'm really, really enjoying this coming week. Nice, nice. Hey. You got another one on the way, right? So you'll be back up yeah, before. Yeah, so no, replace no, them. Yeah, yeah, you're good. When the place, Nobody's hey, going to miss those last two. I mean, hey, the PlayStation <laughs> Pro is coming next month. Nova's out of here. Right? See ya. <laughs> nice so knowing you. <laughs> Daddy's got a game, though. Bye. Yeah, gotta, <laughs> see ya. Great parenting. Oh, yeah. You know it, Robbie. And Briar, what have you been doing this week? I, I'm willing to guess that one of the things you've been doing this week is playing some Destiny. Hell yeah, um, hell yeah. I've been playing some Destiny. Uh, obviously, Rise of Iron is still new. Uh, been doing the hard mode raid. Been doing some Trials of Osiris. Have a fucking hell of a time in Trials of Osiris. It, Good God, it. man. It is it is tough out there for a Guardian right now. Wow. Man, I can't wait for Destiny 2. We get like an influx of new players. Because right now, man, going into Trials of Osiris is hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> it is just the sweatiest of the sweaty. In there, so what, every, yeah. everybody up there is uh, around that same level with you, and it's really, really hard. I'm guessing, huh? Man, it's hard. I'm not that good, you know. Like I, I'm just not that good. Um, I can hold what? my own in like Don't a in like a regular like match, but I get in Trials of Cyrus, and it, the way it works is it's tiered, right? It's like first one through three match is pretty easy. Four through six is it's getting a little more difficult, but usually it's pretty easy. Uh, then the seventh match, man, is a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> 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 and man, we just get, oh, I mean, I can't tell you how many cars we ran this weekend. And oh, man, it was tough. It was tough, tough out there, man, but it's fun. It is. That's what makes that victory that much more rewarding, though. It's, yeah, and it's exactly know. the case, too, is that, like, you know, there is a reward when you get nine wins, right? There is. And if it was easy. That wouldn't feel as rewarding as it as it does when it's hard. When it's hard, the way it is now, when I get to that lighthouse, I celebrate. <laughs> I'm like, wow! I feel good about it. But uh, damn, it, it ain't easy out there. But uh, been also yeah. messing around more with PSVR. I'm really enjoying PSVR. I, I I am looking forward to that next wave of software that comes out with more in depth experiences, full games that take advantage of VR. You know, instead of playing a demo of a Super Mario clone, I want the full game, right? Instead of playing, you know, a three-hour game like Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, I want these full experiences. That's what I'm hoping for. I am I am still really enjoying Eve Valkyrie. This game is... That's probably going to be the game that I buy Wednesday. It is really good, Beastly. It's, I mean... The, Single player kind of sucks. I don't. I don't really dig on it. But the multiplayer is so fun and it's so addicting. Now, I really let, let me ask you a question it. about that. Now I know that you live with a non-gamer, your wife. Has she tried PlayStation VR? And what is her thoughts on it? She hasn't even tried it yet. She hasn't oh, even tell tried her it yet. to put it on. Yeah, I'm. I've, I've, I've been but telling her it it's girl. weird, man. Like the kids are big gamers; they don't have any interest in it. Uh, what? Yeah, nobody in the house has What's even put it on yet. Well, Big oh gamers my. and they don't care about VR? Hold on, hold on, hold Dude, on. Dude, they, they care about hold on. one game. It's fucking Minecraft. <gasps> wow, it still owns them. Yeah, it's That's been that way. It still owns Absolute them. Absolute it has travesty. been that way since we started this show 129 episodes ago. <gasps> wow. Right? Oh. Well, it in all transparency, Minecraft owns two of my kids, Nova and Nina. That's all they do. If you walk in Nova's room right now, she's sitting on her bed watching Minecraft videos. They're missing right. out it's, so much. I mean, it is what it is. It's it the is. New th it's, it's the new Mario 3. It is what it is. It's so all much bigger than that, though, because, I mean, they're, they've they got Minecraft, you know, uh, first-person shooters like Counter-Strike. they got Minecraft. 
DayZ clones. They got, I mean, whatever game comes too. out. Yeah, whatever game comes out, somebody's making that in Minecraft. And the difference is, is they know all the mechanics. They know all the, you know, they know, they have all their, like, in-game knowledge. So they can just apply that to that new game mode and just keep moving forward. Plus, all their friends are in Minecraft. So they, they keep moving that group of friends into whatever, you know, they're doing. The, so The needle keeps moving, yeah. Wow. It, you know, it's not at all the game they started playing when, you know, they initially started playing it. It's it's, it's completely evolved, different. Yeah. 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 Now, before we move on to our news, I want to ask a quick question that you'd be able to answer, Briar. Destiny, is Destiny going to get any types of additions on PlayStation 4 Pro? No. No, it's going to be Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah, People I'm are still so... People are still so into that game. You would think that you know Bungie would do something. I think it's all people. hands on deck for Destiny Two over at Bungie. Yeah, hundred like percent. Everybody's just sport. everybody's working on that. All right. Well, it'll be exciting. I know it's a game I'll definitely buy. Robbie, you want to get us started with this week's Beastly Thoughts news? Yeah. So uh, basically, the big news is first. Uh, no surprise. What we're going to start what, with? What, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. What could that mean, man? What was announced this week? Except the new Nintendo console. Let's get right into it. The long-speculated Nintendo NX was finally announced this week as the Nintendo Switch, an all-in-one home and portable console. The system will use cartridges as previously removed for its physical media. Nintendo Switch is on track to be released in March of 2017. The price has not been yet revealed. What do you guys think? Okay, so... First impressions, I want first impressions of the reveal trailer. I was at work, I was having a shitty day, and then all of a sudden, my Twitter feed started blowing up. Uh-huh. And then my frown got turned upside down. What the fuck? <laughs> what did you guys think of this trailer? I was super excited. My, of course, no My sp- experience is the same as yours, Beastly. Is, I, Me it too. was the night before because I was, you know, I was just wa- kind of watching my Twitter feed, and all of a sudden... I start seeing the uh, the picture of Mario kind of pulling the... Yeah, pulling the little curtain back. Yeah, and then there's all sorts of memes about that. You know, Mario... As soon as I saw it, I was like, holy shit, it's Mario's happening. Mario's peeping on somebody or looking at, you know, creepy Mario memes and stuff like that. But, you know, the news was out there that tomorrow is going to be the reveal. So, you know, basically it was a commercial, right? It was like a two-minute long commercial, three-minute... I can't remember how long it was. And they show the hardware, and it was the first time we got to see this hardware, and it's exactly what we thought it was going to be, and I'm really excited to see it, man. I can't wait to buy this thing. <laughs> oh, man, let's talk about some of the aspects of the, the Nintendo Switch that they they showed. They showed this guy sitting on his couch, yeah, playing playing uh, The Legend of Zelda, yep. and then he, he got up, took his controller apart. You guys yeah. like the way that the controller just slides off of this Switch board? That's what I like to call it. Yeah, I thought that was he cool. Slit- He slid it down on this little contraption, and as he pulled it up, the screen lit up and the TV went dim. And if it's that easy to switch from being, you know, a console, regular console, to being mobile, right? That's really fucking awesome. Yeah. The way the way the games look, they looked. Of course, they didn't look as good as PlayStation Four and Xbox One, but they looked like they could definitely be clear and present danger. Uh, Skyrim looked good, man. Skyrim looked real good. Really good. I. That's all superimposed video, right? Yeah. Because you it know, hasn't been confirmed. It's place when, no, when they yeah. make a commercial, like you can't really make video of video look good. Yeah. So what they do is they put a green screen on the device, and then they, you know, in the post production they put the video on there. So that's not how it's going to actually look. Mm-hmm. But I bet it's gameplay, right? Why would they lie yeah. about it this late? But it looked good. Like it looked real good. Yeah. Well, there's still a lot of questions. Of course, mm-hmm. the thing, they showed that it uh, does have cartridges. Of course, we're back to cartridges again. Uh, the the speculation is they're going to be 64 gigabyte cartridges. So it's a mm-hmm. lot of space. That's a little bit bigger than the traditional Blu-ray. So there's a yep. lot of data that can be put on there. Mm-hmm. Minimize load times. I want to see this new technology and how far they can push forward. Because as we know, technology on cartridges... Hasn't been up to snuff of what we see on Blu-ray as far as resolution and things of that nature. So it's been a long time since the 3DS was created. Even the PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation Vita's games do look pretty damn good, but the Vita is what? Six years old? Is it five old? years four old? Four years old, I think. No, it's older than four, my friend. It's it's at least I think five. it's four and a half. Yeah, it's five or something like that. Yeah, it's it's fi- it's five it's five years old, and the Vita's games look pretty damn good. They look at least on PS3 levels. So. I'm excited to see exactly what this thing does on the mobile front. 
uh, they're saying that the brains are all in the, the actual screen and not on the docking station. Yeah, so, there's, some, but, there's some conflicting reports about that. Yeah. But it seems we don't like, actually know if the docking station has additional power, too. That right, might be any processing thing. power in it. I've heard that there's yeah. a hard drive in there for storage. I've heard that there's additional processing, so you, you get better graphics if it's on a TV. The additional processing thing seems... I don't think that's going to be true. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that they would do that. Seems to me that the whole all the power is going to be right in that tablet. Yeah, so it's seamless maybe as you go from playing on your TV to yeah, it's basically just on the like road. plug it's it the in into game. HDMI and it, the video just goes yeah. out to the TV. Now yeah. let's let's talk about the one thing that we do know about and it's probably the most exciting thing to me, the controls. Yeah. Now, the controller there's more options here than a lot of people realize when they watch this trailer. I think Nintendo kind of went back and grabbed some of the most engaging aspects of their more recent consoles, and they've included all of them on this thing. Now, people might not realize it, but you can use a, a Switch Pro gamepad, which is very similar to the traditional PlayStation and Xbox controllers. So for gamers like us who like these type of tactile controls, it will work. You can also slide both controllers off a la Nintendo Wii, and play very similar to the way you could with a Nintendo Wii. Mm -hmm. Controller separated. You're also able to slide it onto the screen and play it. And when you play it in that configuration, it looks like it'll feel pretty similar to the Nintendo Wii U because that's what the gamepad is. It's a big screen with two controllers on yeah. the side. But they don't slide off. So there's just so many options. And then for a local multiplayer... It's true. The rumors are true. You can slide these controllers off. You can hand one to another player and you turn them both sideways. And you're both playing on these little micro controllers that look like Brian. They're I know so you and I tiny. have giant we have giant hands, okay? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm gonna be playing it like a micro machine. The controller look like it's that small. The guys are playing it in the back of this Volkswagen. Yeah. And they look like they're having fun playing Mario Kart. But there's a lot of different ways to play this thing. There's a lot of questions, and I'm hoping Nintendo hits the nail on the head with this control configuration. There's I mean, a lot of the options mean that they're giving everybody they're giving everybody an option that hopefully works for them, right? If you yeah. sit, if your main gaming is sitting on the couch with like a regular controller, you got that. If your main gaming is personally, you know, playing on like a tablet or a DS or a or a Vita or something like that, you got that. And if every once in a while you want to flip that dock out, put it on a table, and you and your buddy go head to head in some NBA Live, you got that. That's not going to be your main source, though. Like that tiny little yeah. controller. That's just like, you know, hey, we got a we got an. We've been talking trash about it. NBA Live. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. Like, let's do this. <laughs> there's no, there's no getting away with it. I got it right here, motherfucker. <laughs> Here's yeah. your little tiny ass controller. <laughs> that was really I, mean, interesting I think it's too. great, man. Like you got all yeah. these options and no matter how you want to play it, you got it. You got it. Yeah, that was really interesting to me too when the guy's on the plane and he's playing Skyrim and he pulls them both off and he has one controller in each hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'll probably just use the pro controller. But like again, it's really neat how you can split that controller in half. You can give one piece to someone else. It can be two controllers. It's crazy. I love the idea of this thing. And I think... Honestly, Nintendo has nailed the marketing on this. I really think that they really appeal to adults, which I think was the right thing to do. You know, there was no kids in the trailer whatsoever. Nintendo's known as that kiddie company. I think they're trying to get away from that. And it was an excellent trailer. Like that catchy song that was playing. Ha, 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 yeah. Like, it was just so good. They just... <laughs> that song is great. They nailed it. Like, man, I... You know, we, there's a lot of things we don't know yet, right? Like price, obviously, the power of this thing. Who knows what the online service is like? Day one, though, man. It'll be garbage. This looks like a new <laughs> it's Nintendo. Probably it's going to be garbage. Well, well, well this, is, this is what I think, right? I think Nintendo is definitely carving out its own little this niche This might be here. the start of a new Nintendo, man. I'm this, excited. Th this thing, it really – look, put it this way. I showed my production manager at work the trailer. Uh, now, he recently bought a PS4. Unfortunately, he had his PS4, his brand new flat screen plugged into his house. There was a thunderstorm. He didn't have a surge protector. Fried all of his stuff. Fried it. And so he he's without a TV. He's without his PS4. And he's heavily considered buying another one. And I yeah. showed him this. He Is said, he a renter or a homeowner? He's a homeowner. All right. It's homeowner's insurance to cover that. Then. 
Oh, I'll let him know. I'm in a goddamn apartment, man. I hate this place. Then but you should have anyway. runner's insurance for the same reason. It's, runner's yeah, insurance well, I, is like I, six I, bucks I, a month. Yeah. No, no. It's, it's 17, man. 17. 17 is, yeah. It's, it's inflation. It's been a while since I read but, it, I guess. But I, I showed him the trailer for the Nintendo Switch. He said, man, I'm going to just buy that. Yeah. You know? Because he's yeah. got two small kids who love to play games. He saw everything that this thing can do. And to be honest, Nintendo has kind of created this little bubble of things that you don't need versus the new stuff that you do. You know, we got the PlayStation 4 Pro coming. We got the Xbox Scorpio coming. And in order for gamers to really appreciate those to the full maximum potential, what do you need? You need a 4K television. And a lot of people don't have 4K TVs with HDR. Yeah. Now, with the Nintendo Switch... Not only do you not need a 4K TV, not only do you not need a, need a 1080p TV, even if that's the that's an option, but you don't even need a, a, to go buy a second controller. You got everything you need in the box. All you need to do is buy a game, and you can pretty much game in every way imaginable, just because of the way that they package this thing. It's an ingenious proposition. Unfortunately, though, Nintendo stocks dropped seven percent in Japan upon the revelation and the reveal of this thing. Because of of course the stockholders they did not like what this thing was. The, their stocks actually them, dropped. Yeah. They dropped less yeah. less with this than they did with the Nintendo Wii U. That's how the stocks like, go. That it's, is weird. This is way more positive. Than stocks go the up, up, it's, up it's, until the announcement of new product. This is true with almost every company. The stocks go up, up, up till the announcement of the new product with the anticipation, and then they dip after the after the announcement, and then they'll go back, back up. It's, yeah. It's, okay. yeah, it's the it's the product announcement cycle. It it's it's true with Apple. It's true with Microsoft. It's yeah, it peaks at companies. the announcement, and then yeah, it does go down a little bit as you know additional details come out and things like that and whatever else. So we got a lot of news, but this is the big news. But I, I'm curious as to the way you guys feel about this, just on first impressions alone. They're speculating around a 2.99 price point for this thing. I think it's easily worth that. Uh, is, this, is, it, is this something that you guys are considering picking up? I want to know from the guys in the comments, too, and people watching us live on Twitch right now, is the Nintendo Switch something that kind of piqued your interest? Because everybody – now, look, I watch a lot of political commentary because the United States is in a little bit of turmoil right now. And so on a lot of these channels on YouTube that are frequent, people were saying crazy shit. They were like, man, nobody cares about you know the politics. <laughs> the Switch just got announced. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean – just out of nowhere on lots and lots of different different videos that I've been looking at, just random people were saying, why are you guys still talking about the debate? The switch just happened. I was like, wow. So a lot of people are really excited Weird, about yeah. this. And I'm All curious right. to know what you guys think. Is this something that maybe you, you're going to pick up as it comes out? Yeah, uh, I might. Because, man, like... Like I said, obviously, there's a lot we don't know. But at this point, like, they got me excited for the first time in a long time. Because the Wii U, I owned one. I got it close to launch, and I was never satisfied with it. There just weren't enough games that appealed to me. There weren't games in general very much. This and having things like Skyrim and NBA. Robbie, and you're banging on the table. I can hear you. Stop mouth. hitting your dick on the table, Robbie. <laughs> Sorry, Shit. I apologize. I know you're no, getting I'm, excited. I'm tapping my fingers. I'll stop. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but... Oh, God, I forgot what I was saying now. You guys screwed me up. Put your dick back in your pants. Let's talk about video <laughs> games, okay? Uh, well, that's what I was saying. Third-party support. That's what it is. Third-party support. We don't know the full extension of that, but what they showed in the trailer, like, if this thing is good third-party games and their first parties, this thing just appeals to me a lot more than the Wii U ever did. So, definitely... Yeah, the versatility of this thing is what appeals to me. Is that It's insane. I can play Suck it on the it. TV. Like, if I want to play Mario, right... I could play it on the TV, right? I could get gameplay footage for, you know, if I want to do a YouTube video about it through the HDMI, you know, I can, I can live stream it if I want. Uh, but if I just want to kind of, if I'm kind of feeling lazy and I want to lay in bed and kind of just relax and play a little Mario, it's there for me. It's if so I want awesome. to watch a movie with my wife that, you know, it's all about kissing and hugging and no sex stuff, I can play a little Mario <laughs> while I'm watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I love where that went. <laughs> so you know good, what I mean? That was like it's like it's yeah. there's just so many yeah. options here. No, I don't think it's gonna get the third party support. I really don't. I think it's you know it, Yeah, it'll probably because it's be not game. it's not that PC architecture, it's this, you know, Tegra architecture. I think that more than likely that means that a game like Call of Duty is gonna have to go through a different development cycle. 
uh, or uh, or it'll get farmed off to be ported, right? And that yeah, means that ported. it's going to cost companies money to put a port of a you know a third party game on there. And I don't think that I don't think that Nintendo's got that trust right now from third parties. So I think that uh, you know this thing's going to live and die at least initially based on the games that come out uh, for launch and in the first year or so of that. That console. I hope that Nintendo can bring out the big guns like Mario, Zelda. We already saw uh, Mario, Mario Kart. Game. We saw uh, Pokemon exciting. is heavily rumored that it's going to launch yep. with it. Um, that so, Mario, man, oh that Mario yeah. looks so good. But like, I really, man, I'd love to get like, you know, my dream is a game that I love a lot, as you guys know, is Destiny. I'd love to get Destiny on that thing. So I, oh man, you know, I could crazy. play Destiny. You know, hey, if I got a Wi-Fi connection, I could play some Destiny. You know, basically that's what limits me now. You know, and fuck, I got a Wi-Fi connection on my phone all the time. So mm. um, I do worry, like, bec- like, is it going to have? Is it going to have like other features besides gaming, right? Is it going to have a web browser? Is it going to have like, is it going to be compelling enough that you want to bring this thing with you all the time? Or are you just going to bring it when you think you're going to have time to play games, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, like I, I wonder about that. Like, if it's between this and my iPad, like my iPad's kind of fucking useful for all sorts of shit. You know, like yeah, mine goes with me every day, but every day. Like is this isn't gonna be like that. This is gonna be just a gaming device. So I don't I don't know if just a gaming device can be like an everyday care for me, but like mm-hmm. going on trips, absolutely gonna bring it with me. And the fact that you can play the same game, right? Yeah. I could continue Console on play, with my Zelda save, save, you know? Like if, yeah. I'm going to visit my father, I could bring my fuck, we'll probably get three of them, one for each kid and one for me, so that we can all you know, like <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Six all... player Briar Rabbit family. But yeah, but like so we, you know, wherever you go, you can just bring your game saves. It's like the whole console just comes with you. You know, that's the thing. I'm, for me, I'm that's... also wondering, like, is there going to be like an HDMI? Like, do you have to bring that dock to hook it up to a TV, or will there be an HDMI out so you can just you know do it when you're not necessarily at home? Is there going to be a power adapter, like a portable power adapter, or do you have to plug it into the dock to charge it? I got questions like that, but I yeah. mean, this thing seems really cool. Well, yeah. for me, some some big questions that I have that are really, you know, mulling over in the back of my mind is the the online infrastructure of this thing because a lot of games people play nowadays are online, and so yeah. in, in, in the trailers they show these guys out in the basketball court hooking up two switches together and playing some four player NBA two K seventeen, right? That's local. Yeah, it's local. It's like an infrastructure mode, but I'm wondering is how how far Nintendo is willing to go with their online capabilities. They gotta have Wi-Fi. They gotta uh, have it, Wi-Fi. It has to have Wi-Fi. Oh yeah. God, if it I, doesn't, yeah, uh, it, it'll definitely it'll have, definitely it have Wi-Fi. Have, it's yeah, got it'll to. have Wi-Fi for sure. But I'm wondering if they're crazy enough to go as far as Sony did with the Vita and try to team up with, you know, no, team that's over dumb. There. Everybody's already got a uh, internet connection in their pocket already. Everybody's got one. All Absolutely. you do is you pair it to your phone and you're good to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about this thing, man. Uh, I can't wait for March. I think that this will be something I've been... This is like VR for me. It's something Happens I've been waiting be, for. Happens to be a couple of people's birthday months. Yes, I know. yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Really exciting. Yeah. Well, hey, birthday gift time. Hey, you make a great uh, birthday gift. Yeah, absolutely right. Say it again. I'm going to rewind this for her now, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great birthday gift. Okay. The uh, but- Nintendo Switch would make an excellent birthday gift for that man in your life. Oh, sponsored <laughs> yeah. by DC Pets <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to see this thing. I can't wait to learn more about it. Um, and this is something I've been waiting for for a long time, kind of like the whole VR thing. People in our age group, Briar, have always longed for VR. Now that that's here, and we've also always longed for console quality games on the go. The last time we actually had that was the Sega Nomad. And a lot of people have no clue what that is. What is Oops. that? That it's was a Sega Genesis portable. Handheld. Yeah, yes. handheld Sega Genesis. And that was that was what? a it was a console quality game on the go. And I love my Nomad. It's dead and gone now. But now we'll finally have that again with the Nintendo Switch. It's gonna be damn exciting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean Last thing, I mean, my closing thoughts, if they can nail, yeah, the power and all that, and just, I just want to see a seamless transition from home console to portable. That's what I really want. Yeah, Wizard Brothers in comments 
has a good thought. You know, battery life is going to be a big concern. Big but concern. As long as it's got, you know, I've heard that question a lot, but as long as it's got a USB, then any battery will be able to charge that thing. And I got, I think, three of those little external batteries hanging around for cell phones when yep. they go dead and stuff like that. So that'll be a solution for that. If it's got four hours of battery life when you game, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I, can just, I think for, I can bring an extra battery with me. That's not a big deal. It and, just and has to have a USB. That, another thing to think about, though, Briar, is Nintendo has always been kind of ahead of the curve when it comes to their their handheld battery life. The the 3DS lasts forever. The the Game Boy Advance SP lasts forever. My Game Boy Advance Micro, I swear, it hasn't been charged in over a month. It'll turn on right now. Yeah. I do that like every it's month. True. I'll turn it on and say, "Look at this shit." It'll turn right on. So. If Nintendo's able to push forward their battery tech and somehow implement it in the Switch, it's going to be really, really awesome. And I think this is the console that probably needs it the most. I think it's basically going to ha- be a tablet, right? It's a, it's essentially a tablet. The Tegra yep. is a tablet, you know, microprocessor. If, if you can get, you know, four hours out of a tablet battery now, you're probably going to be able to expect about that out of this thing. That's I expect this thing to basically be like a, you know, like a Microsoft Surface or an iPad. But yeah. Nintendo powered, and they just got a really damn good Tegra chip to put in it. That looks good. Yep. All right, and so for the rest of our Nintendo news, I want to breeze through this real quick. Uh, other games announced for the Switch uh, were Mar- the new Mario game. They didn't really announce it, but they showed it off, so we know that's yeah. in the works. Yep. Uh, they showed off Skyrim Special Edition, which has kind of been debunked since the reveal because Bethesda said Supposedly, they were not. Supposedly, which is weird, yeah. Same thing uh, with NBA 2K. Wait, I'm they sorry. Did... Say that again. What did what did Bethesda say? Bethesda said that they will not confirm any games, any rumored or speculated games at this time, including Skyrim Special Edition or remastered. Even though they showed it in the trailer, they yeah, didn't confirm even, it was. Yeah, they said that they can't confirm it. Same so thing weird. with uh, same thing with NBA 2K17. EA said the same thing. We cannot confirm this, uh, and so that's got a lot of people really worried. They did show Splatoon. I wouldn't worry about a new it Mario. Too much. I wouldn't see why they would show it and it wouldn't come out. Like even if they, maybe it's like a legal well, thing. I don't the, know. The thing is, you know, you know that they're working on this. Okay, so obviously they're going to show that that something is in the works, and it's probably for legal reasons they can't really say right now. Plus, it's we got six months till this thing even comes out. So why would Bethesda say it's definitely going to be on there? This thing's got six months left before it, e- it even hits the store shelves. So yeah, I would I would wait too. So but also according to Nintendo. And a Nintendo representative, there will be no more additional information on the Nintendo Switch until 2017. So yeah. we're going to speculate for quite a few more months. That's all yeah. right, though. I'm glad they got it out there. I'm glad we got to see it. I'm glad we got to see like what it's all about. And you know, I, I think it was wise of them to get it out, get news about it out there before the holiday season. You know, uh, before the PlayStation Pro comes out. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it was wise to get it out there because I think this. This could sell people on a Nintendo platform again. Me personally, if I had to choose between this and a PlayStation for my lifestyle, I would go PlayStation all the way Absolutely. or Xbox all the way. Absolutely. Uh, because that fits my lifestyle better. But like if I was going to buy the new Skyrim or not the new Skyrim, but the remastered version of Skyrim, I'd really be tempted to buy yes. it on the on the Switch, man, because like it yeah. just you know that's not an online game. I could I could play it, you know, kind of wherever, and like hell, I might play it for a year and only play it, you know, a few hours a month. But you know, just when I feel like it, like it's just the portability and the flexibility of that thing just has me really amped for it. And can you imagine those exclusive Nintendo Nintendo content perks like? Shooting mushrooms at enemies in Skyrim? Man, I can't wait. All right. <laughs> There's one up mushrooms what? everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. shout, shout out to Soul Calibur 2. All right, so continuing on, Red Dead Redemption 2 has been officially announced this week after a number of teases from Rockstar Games. It is unknown at this time where the game will take place in terms of the series timeline. Red Dead Redemption 2 will be released fall 2017 for PS4, Xbox One, and no word on a PC version. This shit oh, so the so it broke excited. the internet. It oh. broke the internet. Oh and the thing God. was, it broke the internet with the most with the with the smallest amount of content ever. Right. I mean, a, people a red picture, out. a red pink picture first on Twitter had people pulling their eyeballs out. I was like, mm-hmm. calm down, guys. <laughs> I walk out when I saw that. I was like, oh, I know. I, I was one of the recipients of one of your many 
tweets. But yeah, it's exciting. Uh, Red Dead, of course, is to me one of the one of the greatest open world type of god games of all time. I actually like the Red Dead series more than GTA because I feel like GTA has been done so many times. Red Dead is just a, a completely different animal, very similar, but it's just something yeah. so different and so far removed from what we're what we're used to. In Red the GTA. Dead was more serious too. For some reason, it, it it grabbed me more. I'm gonna play it again. I've I've already decided I'm gonna yeah, play it again. Yeah, as far as the story, definitely Red Dead grabs me more. And Red Dead Redemption is one of my favorite games of all. And time. Red has Dead it been six Redemption years Wait, since that seconds. came out? The original? Yeah. Yes, it'll be. I don't seven even by remember it. To be honest with you, I remember liking it, and I remember like certain cutscenes. But I really don't remember it that well because it's been a while. And I'll say this: Red Dead Redemption had the best DLC of like any Rockstar game. Period. Undead uh, Nightmare, amazing. Undead Nightmare was yes. the shiznits. Awesome. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. It was the shiznit. It was great. Uh, all right, <laughs> so one of the few good rappers left, man. All the others suck. <laughs> GTA parent company Take Two Interactive has filed a trademark for video game software known as quote ghost story end quote Ooh. scary yeah it's a good, I have no it's idea a good month to, to reveal that name all right yep. you want to want to hit off the next little bit of news robbie give them a little bit of spice we can't do all chocolate put some fucking vanilla in this shit okay <laughs> yeah all right so continuing on this <laughs> excites me because i love the last game but wolfenstein the new colossus a presumed sequel to the unannounced sequel Oh, fuck, I just messed that up. A presumed to be unannounced sequel to new, The New Order, I'm having troubles today, has been teased again this week by B.J. Blazkowicz actor Brian Bloom. So basically he said that people have speculated this is going to be a new Wolfenstein, and we may be working on that right now. That's basically what he said. But he just the, totally teased the, the new shit out of I thought oh, we already man. knew there was going to be a... Did we already know this, that there was going to be we, a new we, a sequel no, to The New Order? No, it's been teased. No. Yeah, well, they didn't say anything about a name either, but the new Colossus, that sounds, hmm. No, that was an E3. Remember the Bethesda E3 conference? There was a name that said the new Colossus. It was, well, like, just a I tease. Didn't, I didn't fucking see it, Robbie. I was looking at other more exciting I, I, I could have sworn we already knew there was going to be a New Order sequel, but. Damn it, Robbie. I'm ex I'm glad about it. I'm still glad about it, I guess. What's up with yeah, the news? What's, new Order was, like, the most surprising game. It was awesome. So. What? What's up with this late news, Robbie? What's the next story? Let me see. PlayStation Fuck you 4 guys, will, I'm done. PlayStation 4 will be released. What? PlayStation 4 came out years ago, Robbie. All jokes what aside. Are you uh, what? Last... <laughs> this is just getting really bad now. All right, so the last little bit of news is something that we actually have very little notes on, but I did a story on it. It'll be uploaded on the Beastly Gamer channel this week. Um, Pornhub now officially supports playstation vr so only one of our hosts will be able to enjoy the pleasures of this new uh technology oh Porn he's up. already getting it on <laughs> oh god don't start typing briar don't go yet okay you see movies yet, briar? <laughs> now like? now pornhub is actually uh if you go to pornhub <laughs> and you go to the vr videos and you download them you can actually put them on a flash drive <laughs> put them in your ps4 go to your media player and play them in playstation vr using three <laughs> 360 mode. I did a story on this. God damn it. I haven't done it yet, okay? You got to <laughs> try that. <laughs> but uh, it's something new, and, and it's something that I didn't think would happen this fast. But oh, obviously, yeah. there are ways for people to enjoy their pornography, even using PlayStation's VR. So <laughs> if you have a PlayStation VR... I might use VR for this. I'm not going to lie. Well, if, if you guys have a PSVR, and you're, you, know, you got some free time and you know, a free hand, check out... The Pornhub PlayStation. Do VR. I use the Move controller for that? I, I don't or do know I use the standard controller? Controller. It's the way it's shaped. Yeah. <laughs> Look, which direction? <laughs> no, uh, let us know in the comments if you've seen this this virtual reality and if it feels real. <laughs> if, if, it, if it feels real, then let us know in the comments. The move controller is not a sex toy. I just want to clarify that. Seriously, gamer, it was almost like I was there. <laughs> it was amazing. I never came so fast. Life, uh, oh. Never left so fast either. <laughs> <laughs> never came so fast. Oh my god. Oh yeah, my I, god. You know, everybody's experienced porn porn at, at multiple times in their life. Sometimes <laughs> it just walks into your life. But you never know, man. So make sure if you do Sometimes go to porn. Wait, hub and, I want to know exactly what you were doing when porn came walking into your life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey man, it's called. Whoa! What Victoria's... the fuck are you doing here? It's called. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I locked the door, but all of a sudden porn showed up. Porn just showed up in my life all of a sudden. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh yeah. shit! Uh, well, put it this way: if you if you do watch porn on your PlayStation VR, make sure you disable it if you have small children in the house, because you don't want little Timmy to come running into the living room thinking that he's going to be playing some awesome VR. He puts game. the helmet on. He just and sees shits in his face. He's like, what the he just, hell? He puts it on and he just starts drooling. <laughs> Why has Timmy so, been sick all week? I don't know, man. He spent a lot of time with that VR helmet on. Maybe that's doing it. <laughs> Taking a lot of days off school. <laughs> <laughs> we are so fucking bad. My goodness, my goodness. <laughs> oh... <laughs> We're, we're he was sorry. Too, if, he was if, just if too hard to go to school the next day. <laughs> yeah, he was too hard. It, was he too hard or was it too hard? We hope we're not slowly poisoning your mind. Stay on the on the bright side and stay away from the dark side, even though we do have cookies. It's really, really rough. Uh, stay away from pornography, PlayStation VR, if you have small children. I have small children, and it would be horrible if my daughters found out that their lady business wasn't just for peeing. It would be horrible also with the vr on you got you know you got the headset on you can't hear nothing you can't see nothing if you got somebody else in the house man you are oh, in fuck. a highly dangerous situation here <laughs> highly vulnerable yeah. Now that's a that's fucking a, horror game. That's, that's a no-go. That's worse than that's Resident Evil Real set. life horror. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, there could be somebody just standing right next to you. Yeah. And they're like, watching. what are you doing? And they can hear Judging. it through the headphones. Judging you. That's right. Show up to the Beastly Thought Show the following week with a big red Filming eyeball. Filming with their little <laughs> iPhone camera just watching you. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, man, there's some, some really, really horrible things are going to happen because of VR. It's about to happen. People yeah, I are can't wait to see them in the, on the internet. <laughs> it's going to be really, really bad. My goodness. <laughs> ah, well, Robbie, at least now you got a, a really good reason to get your VR on. But he's had VR for like a year. The gear. You got man. what? You, you got what? The Samsung Gear, right? Yeah. Yep. Samsung. I. Uh, I'll be honest. I have not watched porn on it. I don't know be- why. Buying I that beastly? Shouldn't. I'm not buying that for a fucking minute. Be- let's be really honest. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm serious. I, I've not a about fucking time. minute. Like, oh, I don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> maybe once. Okay. Oh, All right. oh maybe a couple once. Zeros behind that <laughs> maybe once. <laughs> you can't forget. I'm VR not going to tell you how many times I've watched porn in VR. Okay. Because it's I too many he, to I count, just, I imagine. I, <laughs> I couldn't count on did. two hands, I don't think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it always devolves into a very dark and... Yeah, the end of the show is not a safe place to be hanging out. <laughs> Never a good representation of what we're trying to achieve here. No, the BC not. Show, or is it? <laughs> If this was our starting point, imagine where the end of the show would go. Ah. I'm saying. <laughs> Yo. We'd be censored. You know what's ha- you oh. know what's happening tonight? I think I'm watching some VR after this. Do Walking some VR. Dead. <laughs> Walking Dead season premiere. Ooh. We're going to see who's, who's going to get dead? brained by a baseball bat. That's right. Who, who's who do you think dead? is getting killed? Man, as long as it's not Daryl, I'm okay. If Daryl dies, you know I think Darryl. I'm done with that show. Like he's the only character I really like. They won't kill. They'll never kill Daryl because he's the the pool for the ladies. Uh, Glenn well, is kind of over lost here too. That, you know what I'm saying? Glenn has kind of <laughs> lost his luster. Who? He used to be a tough guy, Glenn. Oh, I like Glenn too. Yeah. Yeah, well, he almost died, and they brought him back. You know the guts yeah. thing. A lot of people are saying him. What's the guy's name with the mullet? I'm thinking it's him. Molly. Oh, the big dude who used to be in um he used to be on that show, uh that World War II show. Yeah, it could be him. 
I'm thinking it's him because the last episode was basically him saying goodbye and being accepted finally. I knew you could do it. You know, everybody telling him that and he's, you know, feeling accomplishments and feeling accepted finally. Yeah. I'm thinking his ass is grass. Wouldn't mind seeing Rick turn- get bra- brain, man. That guy. Like, like a top 10 world biggest pussy right over there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so I've sick never of hearing that, that show, dude, so bitch. I don't know. I hope you Man up, on. dude. You got business <laughs> to take care of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell him again. Shit. I'm looking forward to watching that. Have you been watching I'll Westworld be- at all? You guys been watching Westworld? No, I've never no. seen it. Yet. Get on it. It is good. Three episodes Westworld. so far. Westworld. It's on HBO. Okay. You remember the old, the old remember the old movie? Westworld? No. No. You never saw the what? movie? With Yul Brenner? You mean Wayne's World? No, what <laughs> What the hell is oh, I'm no. fucking with you, bro? <laughs> Also a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> never seen it. You've never seen but, Wayne's uh, World? No. What Fuck is Wayne's Robbie, World? Fuck Robbie, go turn on your TV right now. You need to watch Wayne's World in Westworld. <laughs> what is Wayne's World? I don't even know what it's about. Party time. Excellent. Come Nothing? on. Nothing? Sold. I'll do it. <laughs> he said sold. Sold. <laughs> That's all you had to say. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's party time. Excellent. All right, guys. I think we should wrap it up. Oh, man. What a fun show. It is a good one. It's a good one. (laughs) Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I'll post this on my... Why am I saying that? Why would I say I'm posting it on YouTube? If you're watching it on YouTube, you already know it's on YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of defeats the purpose. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yo. Also, if you're listening to this on iTunes, it's also on on fucking iTunes. But it's not on fucking iTunes, is it? If you're watching this on Twitch, it's also available on Twitch. There you go. It's not on fucking iTunes. I fooled you, motherfucker. <laughs> you thought you were listening to it on iTunes. It's not even up there. <laughs> I get to see people looking at their phone now. I thought it was fucking iTunes. <laughs> this is bullshit. It was awesome. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. I was like, you don't have it on iTunes. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Oh, man. Like on iTunes. I, don't I wish iTunes. we did, but oh, it's Shoot not me even. now, man. You always make me cry at the end of the fucking show, Fire. I swear, man. <laughs> oh, I 